Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. The video that you have all been waiting for and I'm sure is probably the main reason you even wanted me to have a channel and why you're still following me at this point. So today we are going to start learning how to make patterns. Now this is not going to be a one and done video. Making patterns is a pretty complex tedious and lengthy process. So it's going to be a series of videos. We're going to start with bodices and I only know how to do patterns for women. So I'm really sorry. I don't really know how to do children's pattern making. I don't really know how to do men's pattern making. I can only do adult women. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll start with bodices today and I will show you how to take the measurements you're going to need to create your pattern base. So what we will do is we're going to draft out what is called a sloper. And a sloper is a pattern base that is form fitted perfectly to whatever measurements you take. So we're gonna be taking measurements for ourselves, I assume. I'm going to be doing my measurements on a dress form just so you can see where you're supposed to be taking these measurements from. You're probably going to need help from someone to get your own measurements. But that's what a sloper is. It's a perfectly sized pattern base for you or whoever you're making it for, that you can then draft and manipulate patterns from that to create anything you want. So we're gonna start with bodices. We'll take the measurements one week, the next time we're gonna draft it out, the time after that we'll talk about manipulation and then we'll make a project together. After that we'll do our slopers for skirts and same process. We'll take the measurements, draft it out, manipulate and make a pattern together and we'll finish with pants. Again, same process, measurements, sloper, manipulation, and then a project. And by the end of this, you should all be great experts. And if this is something you enjoy and you really wanna get into it, I would suggest getting this book, which is Principles of Flat Pattern Design by Nora and McDonald. And it gives you all the measurements you need. It talks about how to create a sloper, and then it goes through and it actually gives you different ways to manipulate so that you can know how to do your different manipulation styles to make what you want. So it's a really interesting and good book to have. That's where we're at. Today is going to be measuring for your bodices. Again, I'm going to be doing it on a dress form. You will need someone to help take your own measurements if you're going to be making this for yourself or you'll need to measure whoever you're making for. I have prepared for you documents so that you know exactly what measurements you need to be taking and you'll be able to fill it out. So I've made charts and the charts have the code number because when we draft out the pattern, I'll say things like line one, line two, line three, they go here, here, and here. So it's got your code numbers, it's got the measurement you need to be taking, and then there's a space for you to be able to write down the measurements that you get. So you have a nice neat place to keep it all until we're ready to draft. Those can be found in a Google folder that I will link below. So you just click on that link and you can print it straight from there. I will put all of our patterning and drafting information in that folder so you can access it at any time from the link and you're welcome to print things and however you need to access them. All right, so let's get started with our measuring. So first off, I've marked my dress form in the front and back with a piece of tape. Um, I've made sure that this dress form is according to my measurements. Uh, bust, waist, hips, and neck are all the same for me as they are. This is a mark of right here on your collarbone. So we're going to be measuring a lot of things from this collarbone. That's kind of your center point. And then in the back, my piece of tape is marked where there's this little bump, this bone here at the top of your spine. That's your back mark for measuring. So I've marked those on my dress form, but keep in mind that's where you need to be measuring from. Your collarbone and that bone in the back of your neck. The first measurement that we're going to be taking is going to be from the center back of the neck to the center back of your waist. Now your waist is going to be the smallest, generally, the smallest part of your abdomen. So my waist sits about right here. See, I've got it, well, my thing's a little short right now but it matches up here. Um, so that's where I did all my measurements from. If you have a shape where you feel there is not a concave part of your abdomen, then your waist generally lines up with your belly button or just above your belly button. 
So you're looking for your natural waist, not where you wear your pants. My pants are here, my natural waist is here. So make sure to find that mark because that's gonna be really important. So your first measurement is from the back. You're gonna put it in the center of that bone. So from back neck to back waist center. And you're gonna measure that and write that in your slot. That's measurement number one. Now, I do things with inches. If you are from a part of the world where you use the metric system, at this point, it doesn't matter. We're just taking measurements. So take measurements how you need to take them, and it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Now, the grid paper that we use to draft the patterns, what I have is in one inch squares. So you'll have to do it based on centimeters, uh, which there is a conversion that I'm trying to do in my head right now that I can't. I think it's like 20 centimeters and an inch, right? So I'll figure out the conversion before we start drafting so that if there's ever a time that I'm talking in inches, we can convert it into centimeters for you. But take everything in your own measurements, write them down how you understand them. So again, that first measurement, measurement number one, is from your back center neck to back center waist. Measurement number two is going to be the back bodice shoulder slope. So that is from the shoulder armhole point to center back waist. So armhole is this edge right here. So that's going to be that bone on your shoulder. So if you were wearing something that was sleeveless but had like a wide strap, like it was gonna have a sleeve or like a cap sleeve, it's gonna go there. So that bone on your shoulder is your, is your armhole point. So we're gonna measure from that point, and you wanna do it in the center of your shoulder, about where that shoulder seam is. Um, so I've got my line here on my dress form, but it's about where a shoulder seam is. Now keep in mind, take these measurements in something that's a little form-fitted. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place, but take things in form-fitted so that you get a better measurement. So first measurement, back neck to back waist. Measurement number two is from your armhole point, center shoulder, to back waist waist center. Does that make sense? So from the middle of the edge of your shoulder down to the center of your waist. That's going to be measurement number two. Measurement number three is your bodice side seam. So that is going to be taken from the side of your body and you're going to take it from just below where your arm is. So your armhole. You usually go about not right where your arm hits your body but about an inch lower than that so that there's space. So you're gonna go from the bottom of where your sleeve would hit to your waist. And that is measurement number three. That's your bodice side seam measurement. Measurement number four is gonna be your bodice front center front measurement. So that is gonna be from the center front to the center front, center front neck to center front waist. Remember that's from your collarbone down to your waist, which could be your belly button, might be higher or lower depending. Usually it's higher, not lower. Center front neck to center front waist. That is your fourth measurement. Your fifth measurement is going to be your front shoulder slope. So just like we did in the back, from that point on the middle shoulder, on that shoulder bone, to the center of your waist. That's measurement number five. Now be aware, it's going to go over the bust, so it is going to be a different measurement than your back. Your next measurement, your sixth measurement, number six, is center front neck to bust point. Now the bust point is the center of your bust, about the nipple area. Sorry to be awkward, but that is your, your bust point. So you're going to measure center front to bust point, like that. From the collarbone to the bust point, that's measurement number six. And then you're going to do center front neck to high bust center front. So your high bust, if you're measuring your bust, you go right across the breast right there. If you're doing high bust, you go right above it. So between the bust point and the collarbone is your high bust. If you need to know where your high bust point is, you just measure right under your armpit and that's gonna be your high bust. So you're gonna go center front to high bust. That's your measurement number seven. Now, measurement number eight is your center front neck to bust level. So bust level is right across that bust point. So you're gonna go center front to bust point, center. And that's your eight measurement. Now those are all your vertical measurements. 
So next we're going to be doing the horizontal measurements. Your first vertical measurement, which is measurement number nine, is going to be your bodice shoulder seam. Your bodice shoulder seam is going to be from the base of your neck to that point on your shoulder. So you measure from the base of your neck to your shoulder point, that bone right on your shoulder. That's measurement number nine. Measurement number 10 is center back neck to shoulder. So you're going to measure from the center back neck to that shoulder point. So it's gonna be kind of a diagonal line and that is measurement number 10. Measurement number 11 is going to be the bodice back neck curve. So depth and width are not two different measurements. Don't worry about that right now. So you're gonna take your measurement from the center back to that side seam on your shoulder and it's gonna curve so don't worry about trying to lay your measuring tape flat because a curve is going to do better if you sort of stand it up. So curve it the way a neckline would fit your neck. Don't do a straight line like this. Make sure that it's curved so that you get a correct neck measurement. Measurement number 12 is going to be the shoulder blade width center back to arm side. So the arm's eye is just that right around from that shoulder bone all the way around your arm down into your armpit. So if you were to chop your arm off, that line right there is your arm's eye. So center back to arm's eye is your shoulder blade measurement and measurement number 12. So you're not doing it center back neck, it's just the center of your back. So you're gonna go about the center of the armhole and you're gonna measure from center back to that arm side. And that's gonna be measurement number 12. Number 13 is your back width, center back to side seam. So you're gonna go even farther down, you're gonna find that side seam under the arm, and you're gonna measure from the center back to that side seam there. So it's gonna be below the arm from the center back. That's measurement number 13. Measurement number 14 is and 15 are your waist dark placements. So first you have your waist dart placement from center front. So the dart in the front of the bodice is going to be directly below the bust point. So you're gonna find that and then you're gonna measure from that point to the center front neck point. And that is your center front to waist dart placement. Now for your back dart, it's going to be about halfway between the edge here and the center of your back is your back waist dart. So you're gonna find that center point and measure from there up to center back. So those are measurements 14 and 15. Next we're going to do the back waistline, center back to side seam. So just like we did it from here to the side seam, you're gonna go from your waist, center back waist, to that side seam. So that's measurement number 16. Next, we're gonna do center front neck to shoulder. So we did this in the back, we're gonna do it again in the front. Center front neck to shoulder. It's gonna be that diagonal. And that is measurement number 17. So measurement number 18 is going to be your neckline curve width, bodice front curve. So again, you're gonna take it from the bodice front, take it around your neck. It's not going to lay flat, don't try and make it. Get that curve, lay it front and down like this instead of flat on your body like this because it will bend and curve and you can still measure. So we're gonna curve it around the way a neckline would fit you. You're gonna take that measurement. Your next measurement, which is gonna be 19, is gonna be the bodice front chest to arm size, so here. that in the middle to the middle of the arm there. So about here, it's gonna sit at about high bust. So you're gonna go about high bust straight across. The next measurement is high bust to side seam, arm size, so right below the arm. So you're gonna go from your high bust down around the arm, curving around the bust to the side seam. That's your high bust to side seam measurement. So next, we're going to do number 21, which is gonna be your bust point to bust point. So nipple to nipple. Measure bust point to bust point. Next, you have front bust point to center front. 
So the easiest way to do that, rather than trying to measure it, is take your bus point to bus point measurement and divide it in half, and that will be bus point to center front. Next, we're going to do your front waistline, center front to side seam. So down at the waist, from center front, around, to the side seam, and that's your measure next measurement. Now finally, you just have two measurements left, and that is going to be those circumference measurements. So bust and waist, and those are really simple. You're gonna take your measurement around your bust, and you want that measuring tape to lay flat across the nipple area, which is the center of your bust, so that you get the most accurate measurement. So that's your bust, waist measurement, same thing, right around that waist. It's going to be the natural waist. So wherever you have that concave part of your waist, so you can see my most concave part is right here. If you don't feel like you have a concave portion of your waist, you're going to go about the belly button. It's going to be about your natural waist. So those are all of the measurements for the bodice area. Uh, like I said, the, click on the link below to go to the Google Doc, the Google Sheet form, and that has them all listed out with their code number, what they are, and a place for you to write down your measurements. There's also a portion that says ease. You don't have to worry about that right now. We will deal with that later. But we have to also do our sleeve sloper measurements today. Now, obviously my dress form does not have an arm, and I'm not gonna be really great at measuring my own arm. But your first measurement is your sleeve length. So that's your arms on your shoulder point, that shoulder bone down to your wrist. But you cannot measure a straight arm. So you have to bend your arm, pretend like you're a ballerina, and you're gonna bend your arm and you're gonna measure from that shoulder bone down around the elbow to the wrist. So if I'm really clever, I'll kind of demonstrate. Hold it with my thumb here, see what we can do. So around the elbow like this, and up to the shoulder bone with that curve. And that's gonna be your measurement. The second measurement on your sleeve draft is going to be shoulder blade to elbow. So it's gonna be that point of your elbow. Make sure again that it's bent from shoulder blade to elbow. The next one is going to be sleeve length elbow to wrist. Again, keep that elbow a little point bent, elbow point, to wrist and then you're going to have sleeve cap height so your sleeve cap height is from your shoulder to the bottom of your underarm so that's around from that shoulder point at the top around and you want to go about one inch below where your arm meets your body to the side seam all the way to the side seam of your clothes and that's going to be your sleeve cap height then you're just going to do circumference measurements you're going to measure around your bicep get that measurement you're gonna measure around your elbow bent, around the elbow while it's bent. Again, measuring your own arm, not the easiest thing. So around the bent elbow and then around your wrist. And those are your sleeve measurements. So when we do the bodice, we'll do a sloper for the bodice itself and the sleeve. Now the sleeve sloper is going to be a long sleeve, but we can cut it from any point to make any length we want. And that's something we'll talk about during manipulation. So again, there are two sheets in Google Forms that you need to print off your sleeve draft measurement chart and your bodice draft measurement chart. Go and download those, print them off, get someone to help you and take down all these measurements so that next week we can start drafting. Also, announcement about book club. We're gonna wait until September to do book club. So keep reading Wuthering Heights and I'll let you know exactly what day we're gonna do that. We'll have a discussion beforehand about what time works best for everyone so that we can have a live video discussion on Wuthering Heights. I hope you're all reading it. But I'm excited about pattern making. I hope you're excited. I hope these measurements go well for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you next week.